how to analyze the proposals. When you choose the cheapest proposal, you will ultimately pay more at the end. Don't ask about snippet of code. Ask about processes, how that code written. The same project by business model of time and material and fixed price will have different price tag and will have different timeline. Who is all property rights? When is the point when property rights are transferring to the product owner? Hello guys, so today we're going to continue our trilogy of podcasts about uh, how to choose the right software development partner and today is the last but not the least important uh, theme is how to analyze the proposals. So in fact, what problem we have? In fact, analyzing of proposal is the problem of comparing, you know, apple to orange and orange to watermelon in watermelon to something else i just don't know so much fruit names in english uh so but uh, why because you actually comparing things uh, by very different variety of parameters and sometimes one proposal can have something that other don't and you still need to compare it somehow so today we're going to to try to explain you how you need to do it uh what the main things you need to put your attention to. We obviously will talk about money, about how to analyze price correctly, uh, about quality stuff, communication things and, and others. Yes, and what hidden details can be hide in the offers, like, you know, these small letters in the contracts, which usually no one can see. And also we will talk about elephant in front of your eye, uh, nose, which you can't notice. We had such situation uh, with one of, one of our clients and we will talk about it a little bit later. So uh, yeah, each company has different uh, way of how they present their offer and how they calculating the price based on their business model and how they work. And to make this analogy with the fruits, so everybody, everyone sells some different type of the fruits, you know, each have like taste, colors, different weights and energy value. And you have some somehow to compare them all. And accord, accordingly, method of calculating the price of this uh, exotic delicious may vary. So in order to compare them, you need to have some criteria, the same as we had when we made like searching of the companies in the first podcast. You need to have some criteria, but by which you will define like the value of this proposal and will be able to compare them. So define the evaluation criteria. And there is our main criteria and some additional things which you can compare. So Andre, can you tell us about the main one? Yeah, so f for sure. First of all, uh, proposals supposed to include what they propose. I mean, obvious, right? But what does it mean? Like, do they propose design or no? I mean, in case you ask them or not. Uh, like, is it development? Uh, is it full cycle, full cycle development or not? Uh, are they including quality assurance? Uh, do they include some kind of the support and guarantee afterwards? Like, are they going to work with you for the long term or they just deliver the project at all? Like, what does mean delivery for them at all, right? Like, what exactly is, is, is the proposal itself? Like, it's supposed to um, include, as I already told, deliverables. Like, uh, end product for different people may be different things. So it's supposed to very clearly state, like for example, uh, LinkUp Studio, we, as one of the deliverables, we have UI UX clickable prototype uh, in the end of the discovery phase. This is the deliverables, something you can touch, see, and so on. I mean, in the end of development, we deliver the source code uh, to the customer uh, GitHub or um, or whatever repo, right? Uh, we launch the product e and connect it to the domain on the servers. This is the deliverables. Money, you need to understand what's going on for money. I mean, sometimes I saw the proposals in brackets uh, that don't, don't have a word about money. Um, that's not proposals, guys. This is the, you know, advertising booklets, but not <laughs> proposals. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to have some numbers, like how much it's going to cost maybe it's impossible to calculate uh, like, you know, the, the full price from the every beginning, like most probably it's impossible, but still there's supposed to be some money numbers. Duration, uh, well, that's easy. When things start, when things end and more detail, better. 
uh, like what kind of the business model, like what is the payment uh, terms and all of that kind of stuff. What kind of the expected project team, like how much people, what their levels, uh, like how uh, how long they will work, um, you know, what kind of expertise they have. Um, some kind of the process description. I mean, are they going to use Agile or Waterfall? How are you going to communicate? What are you going to use? Slack, WhatsApp, emails. What is the emergency policy? All of that kind of stuff. Reporting. How you will know what is happening. In the proposals, they must tell you, hey, we're going to work like this. You will know about our uh, updates like, like this. Mm -hmm. uh, property rights. Who is all property rights? When is the point when property rights are transferring to the product owner? Um, that kind of things. And by the way, that's all uh, may sound like a lot of things, uh, which maybe you already forgot what I what I start to tell you in the at, at the first. Yeah. So uh, guys, uh, in the description to this video and to this podcast, you can find the link to our blog and just copy and paste these uh, these bullet points uh, and you know have the checklist which you which you can just go through when you are searching for the right partner for you. Also, each project are unique and probably you have your own things which you want to include on the proposal and there is can be some additional information which company can include. It can be, for example, project technology, proposed project technology stack. It can be proposed architecture of the future system. It can be a letter of recommendation from the client or similar ca case studies. Actually, you can ask company to include wherever you think are necessary to you in order to evaluate that this proposal or something what fits exactly your project. Um, and we can see that it is quite a lot of the criteria which you have to take into consideration. That is why we are not recommended just open the proposal and scroll down the document in searching and search the a field with the, like the column with the price tag and only make your decision by price because it is fully not right uh, approach. You have to understand like each of these criteria which we talk about in details, understand what they include in all these criteria and how it influences on the price. Because just a simple example, like different business model, for example, the same project uh, by business model of time and material and fixed price will have different price tag and will have different timeline. So it's already included and it is only just uh, one criteria. So try to understand in detail each of that uh, things. Yeah, so a uh, very important thing that Oksana just mentioned, I once had the chance to see how uh, customers uh, read the proposals. I mean, we sent our proposal to them and they uh, it's supposed to be the presentation and uh, he share his screen. So I, I wanted him to uh, like basically follow on his screen what I'm telling him and like, I just saw how it happened. Like proposal is open, then scroll, 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 scroll. Oh, this is the price. And I'm like, man, you just scrolled down six pages without even reading it maybe you at least try to understand why price is like that. And this is one, I will tell you right now, very important, like I believe the most important thing in all of this proposal and analyzing stuff. The most expensive things are not 100% good quality, but cheap things are 100% cannot be good quality. It just work like this. I mean, if you open the proposal, I mean, I understand how it may work in the product owner uh, brain. Uh, they think that, okay, I will get, uh, you know, uh, seven proposals. Uh, according to our previous video, you're supposed to have at least 10 connections, right? So you're supposed to get at least seven proposals, right? I will get seven proposals and I will, I have this budget. I will leave only those one who, uh, with who budget I do have. Well, okay. And what they include in this? You, you, you still don't know. So it's it's totally the wrong tactic. And the tactic, so basically uh, accepting proposal only on fact of the price is just nothing. I mean, it, it's it's basically you do no work. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you may not even ask, you just randomly choose the company and yeah. that will be the same you know, effect. I have a good analogy. Uh, like uh, it is like uh, buying uh, product on eBay or Amazon. You know, when you buy the cheapest iPhone cable, it's broken in a week or two. 
So the same with the buying services. When mm-hmm. you ch- when you choose the cheapest proposal, you will ultimately pay more at the end of the product. For sure that it is not always like this. It is only in situation w- when you just choose the cheapest one and you don't understand why it is the cheapest one. Yeah. So so uh, again, the point here is uh, it problem is not that something is cheap or something is expensive or middle. I mean the problem that your decision is based only on price so this is wrong and you may think uh, you may think something like hey i will get the best price and then i will sign the super cruel contract with which force uh, those people to to do their job to finish the things and i will lose nothing well that's not working exactly like this so first of all um like uh, the team that give you like the cheapest price uh, when you spend half of your money, they already may tell you something like, well, okay, we're done or we, and we didn't calculate something, we need more. And you already spend half everything that you have, you know, and half is the kind of good good case. Uh, I mean, you can spend everything and got only 40% of your product done. And what next? You're going to sue them. I mean, in case you think about this in every beginning, well, I have the good question for all of you. I mean... Uh, you're going to become the best lawyer who know how to sue your development partner or you wanted to build a digital product. I mean, what is your goal here? So uh, think about this like, oh, well, uh, I will make the cruel contract and it will save my life. No, it will not. It will just give you some kind of the not the best experience uh, and most probably you will not get uh, to the end with development of your product. So this is just the wrong tactic. So again, don't put yourself into trap. Uh, analyze everything that you got in the proposal and don't uh, don't you know, don't focus only on price. Yeah, so to take a summary of it, I can say that uh, the goal which you have to have in your mind when you're analyzing proposal, you are not looking for the most cheapest proposal or the most expensive one because it is a great quality. You have to look for the most cost efficient one. So, and what mean by cost efficient? Like, let's talk a little bit about quality and what, what we include, what we means when we talk about the quality of product product development. So uh, in the software development uh, industry exists such term as technology debt. Linky, can you please tell us uh, the explanation of this term? Technical debt is a concept in software development that reflects the implied cost of additional rework caused by choosing an easy or poor solution now instead of using a better approach that would take longer. Thank you, Linky. So what what it can include for example poorly written code when uh, engineers save time and don't take uh, enough pressure on make code to look beautiful like seems seems not useful but actually it is the research told that uh, reading of poorly written code can take one developer one hour a day so if you have a team of four developer and they uh, in a week we have five days so in a week you spend 20 hours in a week just to read poor code so this is your technical debt like just wasting time for nothing uh, lack of documentation when you don't have a proper documentation uh, people have to pass information between each other which is actually lose of time because they can just open documentation and read it and also it can case that the team can start play a telephone game you know when they passing to the third person is everything something else was what what it was from the beginning uh, lack of test when you save money uh, on uh, testing engineers every day they make some modification of the code so they will need to make manual testing of everything which take a lot of time so it's better to spend some time on automation like it is what we means quality like automation testing make your product quality and it saves your time and it have like also the design, user experience, it all influence and it's all included in the things which we talk quality and it saves you from technical debt in the future. Yeah, actually uh, you need to understand that you must give the company possibility to explain you proposal that you got from them uh, because there are things that you cannot measure. like. 
how you can measure the communication. You obviously can measure somehow the person with whom you speak and the sales manager, right? But the sales manager, I mean, most probably he got his position because he speak well and he know how to sell. And it's hard to ask about, you know, communication with your real team. So this is something that you supposed to assume by everything you have other so like you just assume in that part and other things you cannot check the code quality which oksana just told you about like which is extremely important well uh, some of you may think well i can ask to show me some kind of the examples of the code of course you will get the best examples of the code come on no going to give you to you know some shit to look it but question will your project look exactly like that well that's already the question things that you actually can do is ask more about the processes i mean don't ask about snippet of code ask about processes how that code written and in case they don't use i don't know for example test driven development on the back end or whatever well most probably code is poor i mean because you don't do automation testing so there are that kind of hints that you need to follow and you need to catch during the conversation during uh, the reading of the proposal that uh, that are actually important to measure somehow things that are not measured right and then to try to to compel them uh linky can you give us some statistic about what is the most important for clients today I don't have exact numbers, but I know that British scientists researched that communication and quality of service are more important than price for customers today. Um, Recently, I had the situation when um, one of the clients was comparing our proposal with another company and we had a difference in the price around like 5%. So the other company was cheaper. And I asked him uh, to give me this proposal to analyze and to understand if this company are a good one. So be care about like, even if people don't start working with us, I am care, you know, them to work with the good people. So I wanted to analyze and to be sure that he didn't miss nothing in their proposal because I understand that for not technical and person who don't, wor- don't work with the offer so often as me, like can mm, miss something. So, and uh, he shared it with me and I opened the proposal and I see just very, very big elephant, you know, which he didn't notice. Uh, In case we have difference in our offer in 5% uh, in price, they didn't include quality assurance at all. So quality assurance is around 20% of your project budget. As minimum. As minimum, yeah. And they didn't have that column in their proposal at all. So, and I'm like, how you want, how, how are they gonna to do this? Can you ask them? Because I don't know how they calculated this. Probably they include this on the development uh, column, you know? I don't know because usually everybody does this on the side. So because development and quality assurance is something different. And he told, like, he asked them and they told not, we haven't included. And like in this case, so, their offer was cheaper, but actually it's not because a big part of the development just was excluded from the offer. So we have to, and this is the details about what we talk. You have to consider everything, ask, re-ask. If you don't understand something, ask to clarify them and be very clear of how you analyzing the offer in order not to get in such situations that you develop the project, you go with the team and at the end you have uh, pro- a product with which not tested at all. Yeah, so. and in the end they tell you like, well, I mean that's not included. And you know this is this is exactly that point where you know Bugs Bunny uh, found uh, small letters in the end of contracts with the loop, right? So you well that this story exactly reflects su- such kind of the things that they may happen and they actually happen with us. In conclusion, um, let's speak about what do you actually need to do because we we told you a lot of uh, a lot of things but what do you actually need to do you need to understand first of all that whatever price you got in the proposal main thing that you need to focus to is to understand does that price is good enough explained does it include everything that's supposed to be included 
to launch your product. Don't think about how you're going to sue someone in case they don't finish. Don't think about uh, how to spend, at, you know, as minimum as possible because you will spend, in the end of the day, you will spend everything you have and still don't have any product. This is not the good tactic. Think about, is that things that I want to build, that product that I want to build, is possible to build in that price, that offer, with those profit process that offered and basically process. And that's it. That's the main things that you need to find when you're comparing all of that proposals. And you obviously can take that list that uh, we just gave you a few minutes ago and use it as the checklist to go through and to find your best software development partner. Yeah, and also, as we already at the end of our video, I would like to make a summary of our series of videos and uh, summarize like what we what we have discussed before. So on the first video, we were discussing about the tools and search how to search for the companies and how to create the list of the companies with whom you are uh, you want to connect and to check as a. Uh, possible uh, software development partner. On the second video, we already know how to talk with the company representative and what question to ask to understand uh, if what they uh, if what their processes are, what they approach to the development and feel this love, you know, which we talked about if these people with whom you want to want want to work in the future. And today we have discussed how to analyze a proposal and understood what criteria to uh, what criteria you have to analyze to understand if this if this if this price are really something which will make your product uh, successful and you will be able to implement it. And uh, as you may see, this process is quite take enough of, of time. So allocate yourself enough time to uh, go through this process. And if you have exact date which you when you want to start the development, uh, start this process at least like five weeks before. So you can make each of these steps carefully and don't make a fault in the choosing. Such, in, such important things because, yeah. well, I mean, that's that's going to be the big part of your life. And will it be happy or not actually depend on your decision and preparation at the beginning. So that's all for today. Thank you for the listening and bye. Till next Thank time. You. Bye bye.